Hi everybody, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com. In tonight's video, I'm gonna shoot a particular target. It's a nebula target that I've shot so many times before. It's a very beginner friendly target because it's so bright and it's kind of small. And I just had kind of a weird moment earlier this week where I said to myself, have I really not shot the Dumbbell Nebula all summer long? I'm not super happy with uh, my latest version of it, so I think I can outdo that tonight. And I've got a good idea of what I wanna use to get the job done. So please join me in the backyard to shoot the Dumbbell Nebula. It's been a weird couple of weeks. We had some concrete work done. We got the patio and driveway done. It desperately needed to be done. We moved into this house in January and it was the number one first on our list for things we wanted to update for this house. So as you can imagine, that kind of put a damper on things. Uh, getting in and out of the garage was impossible. Waiting for that work to get done and still there's no steps on the deck and just waiting for things to get finished up like that, which can really affect the experience of astrophotography when you're kind of used to being able to access everything. The other thing was, uh, so we had the harvest moon just go by and uh, I went on Twitter to see what the, you know, the top retweeted harvest moon photo was with the hashtag harvest moon. And then don't I see one of my own images retweeted 150 times, 1500 likes, uh, shared by someone else saying they took it on their, their smartphone. And I thought the whole thing was really weird. I was like, he was defending that he took the shot, but there was a giraffe silhouette in it, which I was like, okay, that's, that's really weird. And it turns out this is like a, a joke Twitter account where he just posts other people's images and adds a giraffe to it and says that the giraffe was in England uh, the whole thing went over my head. I felt really bad about calling the guy out because his audience knew it was a joke. I guess everybody that retweeted my Harvest Moon knew it was a joke, uh, but the whole thing was really weird and a first for me. I've also got some new equipment that was sent to me that I'm very anxious to test out, but there's a bit of a learning curve to it. And uh, I wanna make sure I do it right before I roll it out. So that's just kind of sitting, a lot of research a lot of experimentation, but you'll see all of that stuff soon enough. Oh, geez, that was close. But tonight I'm using something I'm a little more familiar with. The William Optics FLT 132 refractor you see here has a focal length of just over 900 millimeters, which should be great for the Dumbbell Nebula. This thing weighs about 22 pounds. Some people were angry with me for my last video because I didn't mention the Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro. And uh, the only reason I didn't was because I've never used that mount before. So I can't talk about something I've never used before and recommend it. As you can see, I'm still using this Celestron CGXL. It's the right tool for the job, for this scope anyway. And uh, you know what, I like it. I've had it for almost a year now and uh, I've got a lot of use out of it. Uh, I'm not sure how much longer I'm gonna be hanging on to it. Uh, this was loaned from High Point Scientific generously because at the time I was without a mount uh, with this payload capacity and they wanted to make sure I was able to do my thing so I appreciate that. This is where it all went wrong. I was so frustrated I went to bed. I set up a completely different rig the following night. Let me explain what happened there. So I had everything all set up. You know, I, I set up in the dark, which is a bad way to start your imaging session. Still doing some of the, uh, you know, getting the cables wrapped and everything in the dark. It's way better to have all that done beforehand, but I did my, my polar alignment took like an hour. I just, something wasn't right. And I was using the pole master 
and I eventually got it spot on and I, I really took the time to get it right. After that, I slewed to my first alignment star, which was uh, Dubé in the Big Dipper, and it was right there. So, you know, everything, that was a good sign that my polar alignment was accurate. But I noticed in my four second loop, that star was slowly just drifting off the screen. And so I double checked the tracking mode and the tracking rate, it was on sidereal and it was on the EQ North mode. So I never did find out what it was, but at that point it was after midnight. It was already such a long night, I was so tired and I was like, I can't troubleshoot this issue right now. I'm not in the right mindset to do it at midnight, nor was I, did I have enough energy to tear down and set up another rig uh, until I troubleshoot that issue. So I don't know what the problem is. I really don't think there's something wrong with the mount. I think there was something that I did and uh, if I take the time to kind of troubleshoot, I bet I'll figure it out. But sure enough, the next night I set up this rig because uh, there's no issues currently as far as I know. And uh, so I used this rig to shoot the Dumbbell Nebula. I got some great images of it using this focal length of 550 millimeters. Not ideal because that Nebula is so small. Sorry for the disjointed story here, uh, but that's what happens in astrophotography sometimes. You can plan everything right and then something will go wrong. And that's not exclusive to me, that's everybody that does this hobby. So if you have those nights where things go wrong, try not to get too frustrated. I know it's, it's hard, especially when clear nights are rare. Instead, just press on and move forward and try and learn something from it. That's, I know that's kind of a positive spin to put on it, but that's the best way to approach this hobby. That's why I've got this set up here, and uh, I hope you enjoy the image at the end of this video. Until next time, clear skies.